Hello folks, I'm uh, Stefan and today I'm going to give you a quick overview of Flagger. Uh, Flagger is a progressive delivery operator for Kubernetes. We've started this project at WeWorks almost two years ago as we needed a way to automate the release process of applications on production systems that are managed uh, via Git. And this is what we ended up calling GitOps. Um, so what is progressive delivery? Uh, it's an umbrella term for various deployment techniques. The end goal is to reduce the risk of introducing a new software version in production. It's that simple. It's, uh, it's built upon a continuous um, delivery. And one of the key ingredients of progressive delivery is the ability to segment um, your uh, user traffic, route layer seven traffic between versions of the same application. Um, another key ingredient is the ability to observe the impact of live traffic on, onto new releases. And here I've listed a couple of other ingredients that I don't have time to talk about now. So going back to Flagger, Flagger comes with a declarative model that's expressed through custom resource definitions. And using those custom resources, you can decouple the deployment of an application on Kubernetes from the actual release process. When we have started working on Flagger, we've set some goals. Um, such as giving developers confidence in automating the production releases by giving them the option to validate, uh, to um, express the validation process of a release and, for example, automate the rollback if that's, is, uh, if that's needed. Uh, other goals were to make the <clears throat> deployment process observable, like having real-time feedback with what's happening during a release and also having uh, an alerting system in place that can issue alerts, I don't know, to Slack, Microsoft Teams and other uh, alerting systems. Um, another important goal for us was to write as little YAML as possible. Like in Kubernetes world, uh, all you do is writing YAML and adding a new, a new thing, a new policy, a new custom resource to the whole pipeline. Um, it shouldn't bring up, it shouldn't increase the amount of things that you um, define. And I'll explain later how we, how we got there. And of course, Flagger users should be able to manage the whole process from, from Git. Flagger implements a couple of deployment strategies. Um, one is um, the ability to uh, define canary releases where you shift traffic between versions. And this deployment strategy works very well for um, HTTP or gRPC APIs. Another strategy is A-B testing. Uh, with A-B testing, you'll be segmenting your users with uh, HTTP headers or based on cookies. And this works best for user facing applications that need session affinity. Um, a third deployment strategy is a blue green deployment with traffic mirroring, where Flagger um, controls the service mesh or an ingress controller uh, to duplicate traffic between two versions of the same application. And uh, in this way, the end user is not impacted. Um, it will not end up on the new version, but you can still get metrics and validate that uh, the new release is working fine. And last is the classical blue-green deployment where you duplicate everything uh, and you can tell Flagger to run end-to-end -end tests or conformance tests. Um, and based on those test results, Flagger will take the decision to promote or roll back uh, the new version. Here are some uh, diagrams representing uh, the three strategies. Um, going back to the declarative releases model. So 
what you'll be defining is a canary resource. There is an example here on the um, of, of how a canary release looks like. You will be telling Flagger where the, the deployment is, on which deployment you want Flagger to uh, perform the canary release, how you want to expose that particular deployment inside your cluster and outside of your cluster, and this is the, um, the service uh, specification. And the most important part is uh, the analysis. Here you configure Flagger what kind of metrics it should look like, it should look at um, for how long the analysis should be run and which are the thresholds um, that Flagger will be monitoring and will be performing uh, rollbacks. And you can set many more things here. Um, uh, there are things like webhooks, uh, you can specify header matching and uh, also alerting. How does Flagger perform this kind of release automation? So let's say if you if you want to do a, a kernel release manually, you'll have to duplicate your deployments, uh, your deployment manifests, um, your um, Kubernetes services. Uh, maybe you have an horizontal pod autoscaler. You have to create two horizontal pod autoscalers, one for the current version that's running in production and one for the new version. And you also have to create service mesh objects or ingress objects where you um, define virtual services, HTTP routes, um, you have to map the ports and so on. Um, when using uh, uh, Flagger's canary uh, custom resource, you create, you define your deployment, you define your horizontal pod autoscaler, and of course the canary uh, object. Then Flagger creates for you all these um, um, duplicated uh, manifests. For example, Flagger creates a separate deployment. That's the one that uh, all the traffic goes to by default. And it's called um, everything that Flagger creates is prefixed with minus primary. Um, and it, Flagger also creates all the service mesh or ingress objects for you. So you can, let's say, start with a particular ingress controller. You can change the ingress controller and you tell Flagger, hey, now I'm not using Nginx anymore. I'm using, for example, glue or contour and Flagger will be creating these objects for you on the fly. So you, you can switch between service meshes and ingress controllers uh, when, you, uh, when you are using Flagger to expose your app and configure your app inside the cluster. Um, in terms of traffic management, Flagger works with, uh, with a couple of technologies. Um, it works with Istio, Linkerd, and AppMesh if you are using a service mesh solution. Um, and it also works with Contour, Glue, and Nginx uh, if you are relying on ingress controllers only to route traffic. Of course, you can mix and match the two. For example, uh, Linkerd doesn't have an ingress implementation, so you can combine Contour as an ingress controller with Linkerd as your surface mesh and perform um, canary releases for backend applications with Linkerd and for frontend applications with uh, Contour, Glue, or Nginx. Let's talk about the validation process a little. Um, so Flagger allows you to define key performance indicators and thresholds. And the decision to roll back a uh, um, canary deployment um, is based on deployment health status. This is something that Flagger um, queries the Kubernetes API to find if the pods are ready or not, if, if they are, I don't know, crash looping or stuff like that. But also Flagger can um, talk to Prometheus, for example, and based on uh, the service mesh or ingress controller that you are using, Flagger can um, detect um, request success rate. That means from the total requests that your uh, version receives, what percentage of those requests are ending in a 500 error. Uh, it can also look at uh, request latency so you can say, if my application is um, 
responding in above 500 milliseconds, then uh, we should do a rollback. We should not promote that uh, app because that version, because it breaks some uh, SLA that we have um, inside our cluster. You can also define custom checks with metric templates, and you can also use webhooks to trigger end-to-end -end testing, load testing, and all sorts of uh, other integrations that you um, can use um, by uh, telling Flagger to call into your systems via webhooks. In terms of metric templates, there is a different custom resource called the metric template where you can um, create queries in PromQL for Prometheus, for Datadog and CloudWatch. And we are looking at implementing more metric providers. The idea is that you'll be defining metrics for things like, I don't know, I want to measure latency uh, for all my apps, and then you can reuse a metric template for multiple releases of multiple uh, applications. Um, another um, feature is alerting. Flagger can um, send, uh, for example, events when, the, when a canary uh, starts, when it's rolled back, what type of errors uh, they encounter to Slack, Microsoft Teams, Discord, and Rocket Chat. And you can define different alerts for different teams. Uh, a canary uh, release object uh, allows you to define multiple types of alerts. Now, going to the testing webhooks, um, the idea here is that Flagger will call into a system. That system will perform a particular test and will report back to Flagger the result. And um, Flagger comes with a um, add-on. is a is a different system that you, uh, is a different deployment that you've been using uh, that has support for running Helm test, Bash bats. Um, you can also run uh, load tests with Hay, uh, with uh, GAZ for gRPC and so on. Um, you can also bring your own um, testing system. It's just um, what you need to do is implement a little uh, HTTP interface, be able to um, um, see that Flagger is calling you. Flagger will tell you which canary deployment is running, and uh, your system should respond with a 200 uh, status code if uh, the test has succeeded, or with a 500 uh, uh, status if the test has failed. And this is how Flagger can do the rollback for you. You can also do manual gating. This was a, um, a feature that landed up quite late. Um, but since that, people um, in some organization, they need full control of when the rollout should start, uh, when uh, the promotion should happen. Um, do I want to roll back right now? So a person does uh, that decision. So how it, ha how it, uh, how it happens, um, you can uh, call into a Flagger HTTP API and uh, using the name of the um, uh, canary object and the namespace, you can uh, open gates and close gates. And there are a couple of uh, um, gates that you can set, like um, start the rollout, confirm the promotion of the rollout, or do a rollback at any point in time uh, during the canary analysis. Flagger works great with um, other GitOps operators like Flux, um, Jenkins X, Argo CD. In fact, Jenkins X uh, comes with Flagger when you want to, uh, to do um, uh, progressive delivery. You can install Flagger through Jenkins X CLI. And why it works with all these GitOps uh, solution is because Flagger creates um, its own duplicate of all these deployments, secrets, config maps, and so on. So every time you modify something in your Git repo, after that deployment gets applied on the cluster, Flagger detects that change and, and runs the analysis for you. It never mutates the objects that you have control onto. And 
let me tell you about the roadmap. Uh, what we have right now on the roadmap is creating a conformance test uh, uh, operator that can run Kubernetes jobs, um, add more metrics like stack driver or influx DB, and extend the support to other service mesh implementations like uh, like other service meshes that are implementing SMI. And um, somewhere in the future, we, we hope to, to integrate Flagger with the new uh, Ingress API, Ingress V2 of Kubernetes. And we have some hands-on workshops. If you want to uh, give Flagger a try, please um, pick something from this list. You can um, do a workshop with Istio, one with Linkerd, we have one with AppMesh on EKS. So there are a lot of choices here. Um, and finally, here is the link to the Flagger repo. Please give it a start if you like the project. And um, we have an awesome docs website if you want to dig into Flagger features. And that was it. Thank you very much.